Ladies and gentlemen, we are high! I'm Jerry. I'm Kevin. And I'm Tom. It's time! Live from the CSB studios in Westbury, New York, it's the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Featuring co-host Kevin Dolan and the host that's been here since day one, Jerry Napoleonello. On Zeno Radio. And on All Noise Radio. What's up? Thanks for sharing your afternoon with us. Tom and Jerry Sports Show, you're live with Jerry Knapp and Kevin Donlin on Zeno Radio, All Noise Radio, and the Live 365 app. We got a whole bunch to get to, a lot of football on tap this past weekend. Let's start. Yeah, man, another Sunday, another uh, day full of games. Uh, hey, man, this uh, this is an interesting season this year. This was a very difficult week, uh, a disappointing week for certain teams. Uh Obviously, <laughs> a lot of injuries, big, you know, impacting injuries going on in the NFL, especially, in the, especially in the quarterback position. A lot of injuries this year in the first yeah. two weeks, a lot. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. We talked about this before the season started going into the season, in our, uh, you know, NFL preview that, you know, you, you know, these helmets, uh, I don't know if they're doing more good than they're doing bad. Yeah, but even the injuries, when you, when you look at the injuries that are already like have happened, a lot of them aren't really like helmet related injuries. Yeah. I mean, you got Drew Brees with uh, a shoulder injury. Um, they said it's not a torn rotator cuff, but there's something up with his with his shoulder. Well, they're still um, trying to go through the diagnosis. He's still basically going to go see a second opinion today. I mean, uh, there's there's all different reports with with Drew Brees, and you know, um, basically like it, it, one report saying that he's going to be out several weeks. And then you got another report saying that he could play this week. You don't know. You know, and neither do the fans of uh, the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, exactly. So right now it's a big problem for them. They uh, It'll be a bit of a struggle for uh, the Saints if he's not able to take the field uh, this coming week. Um, they actually they have a very tough matchup, too. They're taking on the Panthers, a very stout defense and on the road. So yeah. it'll so, be a tough one, especially starting 0-2. You don't want to get in that 0-3 hole. But then you got Romo's injury that was basically just for – being sacked and yep. and landed on and breaking his collarbone. So that's another injury that didn't happen through, you know, helmet related. And Jay um, Cutler obviously on a tackle. Uh, yeah, after an interception. And, string. and then uh and then obviously Matt Stafford with the beating that he took. Well, yeah, that was I mean, I think every bone in his body was was beaten up in in that game. Um he he was just totally He got hit on every play it seems like. Every play. Every play, and, and even like the plays that he did get hit, it was like one of those days that it was like he's on the ground, and then a guy like tries to jump over him, he gets kneed in the head. Like that, that was the kind of day that Matt Stafford was having. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't look good in that game at all. No, I mean, and uh, it makes you wonder uh, the same thing even with Drew Brees if the injuries were really affecting them throughout the game, and uh, if it would have made a big impact. I mean, I've seen the greatest quarterbacks in the world come into a game with broken ribs, or you know maybe even just a broken rib and you know you could see how much of a big impact it makes yeah. on a, you know on a player and on the team the yeah. whole to be honest cuz you got to be able to move the ball down the field and those teams in particular the Saints and the Lions had a hard time doing that this Sunday resulting in both of their losses both teams starting 0 into a lot of a lot of disappointment in the NFL a lot of a lot, of, teams a right lot of you know what the NFC lot... in general man the NFC looks like uh i mean the team that was supposed to come out, the Seahawks 0-2. I mean, it looks like it's Green Bay Packers, and then there's another layer with yeah. the rest of the NFL right now. I mean, even the pa- you know the Dallas Cowboys, you could have put on that layer too, but obviously with all the injuries impacting, they're right back down in that second yeah. still. You know, so. uh, let's get into the recap of our games that we picked last week. Uh, Jets and Colts last night. Who picked uh, the Colts? You did or me? I picked the Colts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I picked the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the New York Jets came into uh, Monday night uh, 1-0 and uh, A decisive win over the Cleveland Browns uh, We were able to take down the Indianapolis Colts And Andrew Luck continues to look like he's struggling big time It has a lot to do with his offensive line uh, Clearly not enough uh, you know, protection from him These were four-man rushes for the New York Jets They, were, you know, they brought a couple extra guys here and there on certain plays Obviously Bad decisions by him, forcing throws on balls that, you know, he's getting, you know, he's getting hit during these throws. I mean, and I was t- 
telling him off the air. I mean, there was a part during that game where you see him get hit, and even John Gruden <laughs> announcing the game on Monday Night Football saying, uh-oh, before while the ball's in the air. Ball obviously wound up getting intercepted. Jets defense was very stout in this game. Don't really want to go too much into it. Uh, they got to take on the Eagles next week and try to Andrew, go to 3-0. and Andrew Luck. Really, it's not. It's not even just his offensive line. I mean, it, his offensive line has something to do with this, but he's never had a running game. Yeah, it's always on his shoulders. And uh, the the crazy stat. I mean, for as long as he's been in the league, he has. He's only had one game where a, a running back has has rushed over a hundred yards. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at the same time, this guy's never had a you know a, since a good since then either though. Demarco Murray has had. 15 by himself. You know, we've talked about teams that go out there and become one-dimensional. If you're not running the ball effectively, you're never going to win in this league. I mean, the Jets didn't even run the ball that effectively last night. There's one thing I could tell you from the New York Jets last night that was disappointing was their running game. Uh, I think they might have just surpassed over 100 towards the end with Bilal Powell's numbers. But, uh, you know, you have to be able to be, uh, you know, you have to be able to play both sides. I mean, be able to do both sides on the ball. I mean, Run the football and pass the football. You got to be able to mix it up. You got, or else teams are gonna have no problem pass rushing you all day long. Uh, you know, the Jets obviously found a good way to mix it up. The Colts tried to get their running game going early. Obviously, it didn't uh, become effective. They became one dimensional real quick. And I mean, at that point, it's very easy to go after the quarterback. And even someone like Andrew Luck, who even actually bailed out on a couple of those opportunities, yeah. you know, stepped up and was able to run for uh, first downs and stuff. But obviously, you know, when you're one dimensional like that. The team knows you're going to throw the football. It's very hard to be successful. But uh, moving on. Yeah, the Jets take this game uh, 20 to 7. Yeah. I believe it was. Uh, so uh, moving on to the next game, it was the Thursday night game, Broncos and Chiefs. Uh, we said that, uh, well, I mean, I picked the Broncos. I picked the Chiefs. Yes. Yep. So that was a. Uh, that was a very interesting game. I'll be honest. I was very uh, disappointed in Jamal Charles himself. I mean, this is a guy that, you know. I said Denver, Denver's defense was looking good. Yeah, they're, they do have a very good they're, defense. They're, their defense looked good. Yeah, they, so. they really did have a really good defense. Their defense was a big part of why they won this game, uh, being able to force a turnover twice, uh, timely turnovers, to be honest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Kansas City, uh, they, Jamal have, Charles, they yeah. have a complete team, yeah. Kansas City. Whether people want to believe it or not, they do have the deep threat in Jeremy Macklin. Uh, you know, the possession receivers are still there, missing a little bit with this team. But, uh, you know, the running game's there. The offensive line's there. The quarterback that's going to limit the turnovers is there for this team. A great defense. Uh, they had every, you know, listen, when you lose a turnover battle, you know, 3-1. to one, Well, that's the thing. You're you never know, going to win a game in this league. You know, Jamal like, Charles. Even going back actually, with the Colts and uh, Jets as well. Jamal Charles actually had a good game. If yeah. you minus the two fumbles that he had, but you know what? That's the that's the, that's the biggest sin. part. That's, that's the, the biggest cardinal part. sin in football. He he, ru- he rushed twenty one times, one hundred and twenty five yards, and a touchdown. But he had two fumbles, and obviously one was the most crucial one at the end of the game that, you know, eventually lost the game for them. With me and this whole idea, of what happened there towards the end of that game? I mean, when you're running the ball with Jamal Charles, I can understand where you're going. This do you run? Do, do you need the ball on that? Yeah, there's 30 seconds left on the clock. If Jamal Charles rushes over 20 yards and you find yourself at, you know, the 40-yard line, what are you doing from there with a quarterback that, you know, obviously can't spread the ball like most quarterbacks in the NFL can? He doesn't go deep. So Andy Reid, uh, I don't understand the move there. Uh, obviously, you weren't going to be scoring any kind of touchdown with 27 seconds left on the clock. But you credit the Denver Broncos. They went out, went after the ball, forced the fumble, won the game. Excellent performance from the full team of the Denver Broncos. Peyton Manning, obviously. When you're the Denver Broncos, he silenced the critics on that. Well, on, when, on that game, when you're the Denver Broncos or a Denver Bronco fan, and you see that they go over and start the season 0 and 2, the way Peyton's played so far, that that's a plus. I yeah. mean, this is a this is a Peyton Manning, a different Peyton Manning from what we're used to. This is a guy that can go out and score at will. They're two uh, and 0. They're yeah. two and 0, and people are still bringing up, you know, Peyton Manning and Peyton Manning, I, and and I mean. We've watched Peyton Manning basically his whole career with bad defenses. With bad defenses, and but we've seen how he throws the ball. We see how he, how he is. Um, so these first two games, you know, are not Peyton Manning esque. Well, I mean, but I mean, he he put up. He was twenty six for forty five, two hundred and fifty six yards, and three touchdowns. And his team is two and zero. Oh. Yeah, he's able so, to play into his defense. That's exactly you know, what even you know a lot of teams will do that. A lot he of doesn't have to put it. up crazy numbers. I mean, it, these were 
very good numbers, but I mean, it doesn't have to put up crazy numbers to, to win the game and, and their defense is, is solid right now, but well, from, from crazy number, you know, going from the old crazy numbers from Peyton Manning, we go to the new Peyton Manning in the NFL this year. And that's Aaron Rodgers as the Packers took on the Seahawks. Uh, Broncos win that game 31, 24, by the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. They won um, on, the, on the on the. I think people saw a prime time, baby. Well, you know I'm what just I mean? saying, you know, people sometimes they don't watch the game. That's you know? true. You know, that's what overtime app is for. That's true. You know, absolutely. 100%. Uh, <laughs> next game, Packers Seahawks. Uh, this this was obviously a rematch of the NFC Championship game. Aside from one important factor. Yeah. This one was in Green Bay. This was not in Seattle. We all know what kind of team Seattle is away from home. They uh, still have not had a home game yet, so yes. we don't. So I don't I don't kind of put the panic on the Seahawks yet. Um, I want to see how they play at home. If they if they go into home like their their home stadium, the Green Bay Packers have an awful lose. awful awful running uh, run defense, and it's really a but known they shut fact. Down that's Lynch. what I'm saying. The you offensive know, the line right thing. now might be a little bit of a question mark. It makes you question this trade that the Seahawks and uh, Saints did for both sides. I mean, uh, Jimmy Graham obviously going over to Seattle. Uh, Max Unger and the draft pick going over to the Saints. Listen, the Saints won this I, deal somehow, some way. I I understand uh, what the Saints did in moving Jimmy Graham. They weren't going to be able to sign him yep. to the money that he was going to want. Mm-hmm. And neither the Seahawks. So, so I don't understand this trade from the Seahawks' point of view. You can't even sign your all-star safety right now. I mean, you sign your quarterback to a... a a load of money, which yeah. I still don't understand that contract to this second. Uh, Russell Wilson has not shown me that he is worth that kind of money. Um, this is Seattle uh, being, you know, felt the pressure from Russell Wilson, obviously the threat of him leaving. Um, yeah. But Russell Wilson is not the reason why you went to the Super Bowl two years in a row. That defense has always been the reason. We've, They've been we've always down. said that. We've yeah, always said 100%. That. I mean, I think any NFL fan will tell you that. I mean, this you, is, you know what? Some people really love Russell Wilson, and I don't understand it. I really don't understand. He's a good it. game manager, but he's never going to go out there and win you a game. No. Your defense is going to win you a game. Marshawn exactly. Lynch and your running game is going to win you a game. And Max Unger on your offensive line solidifying that, it. I mean, I didn't understand this trade at all. I that's, really did That's didn't. that's that's what I've always said. Russell Wilson's a smart quarterback. He doesn't make the mistake. He's mm-hmm. a game manager. But when you have the best running back, I mean, I'll be honest, maybe man. one there was, B. There, there was that, that fourth quarter drive, four minute drive you had, the, you know, the four minute mark, and Russell Wilson's going down there to try to tie that game. I mean, this guy is not going to win the game. He's not going to sit there and and drive the ball seventy yards for yeah. you and win the game. Peyton yeah. Manning will do that for you. Aaron Rodgers will do that for you. Tom Brady will do that for you. But Russell Wilson won't. So why did Tony Russell Romo. Wilson get paid? Tony Romo would too. Yes, yeah. I'm not going to disagree without a doubt. You know. Russell Wilson's not going to do that for you. He's no. never going to be able to do that for you at any point, uh, especially this early in his career. I understand no. all the, you know, I mean, you got to remember, this is the same guy that beat the Green Bay Packers at home with four turnovers. Yeah. Okay? Four turnovers, yeah. and they still won the game. Yeah. And you're going to pay him that, that following offseason. I mean, it makes no sense to me. Seattle did a terrible job of that. Cam Chancellor has every reason to be holding out right now. I never agree with got players that hold out, but if I were him, I would have done the exact same thing. They should have never paid Russell Wilson. They should have paid him first. Packers win this 27-17. Uh, Giants Falcons, uh, one guy that came from the pa- uh, came from the Packers to the Giants, and then they they released him, and he went back to the Packers, and is having a good first two games at least. Uh, James Jones, uh, the Giants, I don't know what they were thinking uh, keeping Preston Parker, but they actually just released him too uh, because he's that bad, um, <laughs> and, and and not keeping, you know, uh, James Jones is, is kind of comical. Uh, so they're they're you know, seeing the, the remnants of that. Uh, Giants, Falcons, Giants are just not a good team. Yeah, the Giants are having a hard time on the defensive side of the ball. You cannot blame the coaching staff. Players and fans alike are trying to blame the coaching staff, especially with the game management towards the end of these games. But, you know, listen, as Steve Spagnuolo will tell you, I mean, when you have the personnel, your defense could be as threatening as possible. But right now, the Giants do not have the personnel on the defensive side. The offensive side, they actually have the personnel to be successful. But, you know, we're going to get more into this Giant and uh, Falcon game when we get back. Uh, you're listening to the Tom Jerry Sports Show. Do you have sports opinions? Or do you want to start your own sports debate? Then Overtime is right for you. Overtime is an app for sports lovers made by sports lovers. This is the best place to talk about sports. Overtime is available at the iTunes App Store. 
Be a part of something big and help us take the game to OT. Over time, the game never ends. Follow the NFL this season on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Tom and Jerry Sports Show featuring Kevin Donlan live every Tuesday on Zeno Radio and re-airs Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern on All Noise Radio and the Live 365 app. Follow us on Instagram at Tom and Jerry Sports Show and join the conversation on Twitter at TNJ Sports or visit our website at tnjsports.weebly.com or call in to 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. We are back with the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. We wanted to continue on the Giants and Falcons, but first we're going to take a call. You're on the Tom and Jerry. Okay, you're on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? Hey, it's, hey, it's Greg from Dream Team. How's it going? What's going on, Greg? How are you? Good, man. Hey, so so what do you think when the Jets and Patriots meet? What's the final score, and who you know? Oh, how's man. it looking? This is gonna, we were we were actually just talking about this. Yeah, this is um, going to be a good one, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I mean the uh, the Patriots. I, I was just saying. I mean, they Tom look Brady. Unbe- they Tom look Brady looks un, un, unbeatable. Really, he he's basically whatever you send at him, he's beating you with. Well, it, it really doesn't matter. Well, the Bills went out there and shut out Andrew Luck, and then give up 500 yards to Tom Brady. Exactly. I mean, Tom Brady is really playing, you know, near perfect football to be honest. Right now, he's got the weapons to do so. Uh, you know, his running game really hasn't even been too effective. I think LeGarrette Blunt finished with maybe like five yards in that game. Deion yeah. Lewis was very good out of the backfield. Tom Brady's been getting him the ball in uh, room. This is a great offensive mind in Josh McDaniels. Uh, the Patriots look very dangerous right now. And, I mean, when you see the Jets and uh, Patriots come up against each other, you know the, uh, you know it's going to be a lot of, you know, turmoil. There's going to be a whole, you know, rivalry, the whole nine, and Darrell Rivas going back to the other side. And it, it's going to be an eventful game. I yeah. mean, Right now, as a Jet fan, I'd be a little bit too uh, biased when it comes to that. I mean, what, what's your prediction for that score? I mean, it, it's it's tough to pick, um, but I I mean, I I kind of have to go with the Patriots. I mean, I know, I know your bias pick, but I gotta go with the Patriots. I know it's understandable. The Patriots are playing near perfect football right now, and obviously, you know, I mean, aside from a little bit of the. Uh, Excerpts on the defensive side for the Patriots. I mean, the Jets obviously were able to stop uh, Andrew Luck, but obviously, you know, we saw what happens. You know, Andrew Luck's kind of struggling right now, and Tom Brady is doing anything but struggling. Oh, man. All right. Well, guys, you know, excited for that one. And uh, thanks for taking my call. No, no hey, problem, man. Thank thanks, Greg. Yourself. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, we want to go into that matchup, uh, you know, towards uh, the closer to that game. That's going to be an eventful one, but we want to continue uh, moving on with the Giants and Falcons. Uh, yeah, I mean, the the Falcons, uh, Julio Jones is really staking his case for, um, you know, best wide receiver in the game. Uh, I, my biased opinion, obviously, is Des Bryant, but he can't go out and show that right now because, you know, he – Because he can't stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he can't stay healthy. Uh, oh, well, let's, let's relax there. I mean <laughs> – um, but yeah, I mean, I have to, I have to, you know, go with, uh, Des Bryant, but, <laughs> oh, that was good. uh, but I, I mean, the oh. Giants, the Giants, this is two straight games where you had a 10 point lead with uh, what? I mean, fourth five quarter. minutes, five minutes left in the fourth quarter or so. Even so, fourth um, quarter in general. And then just having the lead with under two minutes. You can and blame losing the, both games. You can blame the coaching uh, all I gotta, you want. you got to put the blame on Eli Manning. This is twice. Yes, uh, in Sunday's game against the Falcons, he, he turns the ball over in the red zone mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. That's twice. Twice he's had two boneheaded moves. Yeah, you got to be able to try From to find a, a way to get rid of the ball. I mean, Two-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah, we uh, – What's know, going on? They're having a hard time right now. I mean, you can blame Tom Coughlin. This is a Super Bowl winning coach. Obviously, if uh, 
this were to happen with Bill Belichick, I think the last thing people would do would blame Bill Belichick. I mean, I put them obviously close to an even scale. Tom Coughlin is a very successful coach in this league. I don't know how long he's going to be. Well, the Giants just don't have the personnel to win. They didn't have it last year. They don't have it the, the year before that. Yeah. You have no option. Oh, he's, a, he's a great coach. Both he sides really of the ball is. are questionable. I mean, oh, aside from Jason Pierre-Paul, who was on that defensive line last year? I mean, you signed an old man coming out of Green Bay. I mean, you guys – you got to go out there in the draft. You got to be able to go and pick up these big bodies in the draft. That's the only place you're going to find them is in the early portion of this draft. I mean, you look at, I mean, I was even looking at the Colts last night. That defensive line, they picked up a sleeper in the third round and the fifth round, and they were stopping the run like it was no problem. Yeah. And that's a very they, tough they, team to they, play they against the run. They even have, you know, two older guys. I mean, Robert Mathis. Yeah, exactly. And, they so, know it's time to move forward. I yeah. mean, I think the same thing needs to go for the New York Giants. The New York Giants have to pick up, pick up the bigger bodies. I think their secondary is one of the best in the league. You know, obviously, Cromartie and Prince of Mukamar, these are two stellar uh, cornerbacks to have. But, you know, when you have no pressure on the quarterback, you know, you basically can, uh, you know, I mean, Matt Ryan, if you have an hour and a half to throw, you're going to find a receiver. Yeah, I mean, especially you give when you have Julio Jones. Any quarterback in the league. So the Giants need to find um, a way to right in the ship. Uh, but we're Falcons win that 24-20. Yep, we're going to move on to the uh, Patriots versus the Bills. This game was uh, – I think this game went a lot of you know the way a lot of people thought it would. Uh, I didn't. I didn't think. Um, I didn't think it would go 500 yards, but and and a 40 to what 34 game. Yeah, especially um, in you know at, on the road for the uh, New England Patriots against the Bills. Yeah, I mean that that game's a lot of scoring in there, but uh, you know the New England Patriots, uh, their offense looks like you know it's going to be very difficult to stop all year long. Uh, they play home against the Jaguars this week. That should be just another game where they're able to go out there and dissect. Tom Brady looks. Like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, yeah, he really does. Um, I, I mean, he really, really ripped apart the Bills' defense. Um, and this is this is one of the one of the top defenses in the league that everybody thought. And I, I mean, they are, they are. They really are. I mean, but, they didn't show it on Sunday, but right it's, now it's the Patriots, though. Like you know that that and it's Rex Ryan. Yeah, that you know what? That's the team that you could have the number one defense. Um, and you could give up 40 points to, you know, the Patriots and everybody would be like, you know what? It's the Patriots, you know, yeah. like it really doesn't matter how good your defense is, but it's just like, all right, well, we're going up against Belichick. We're going up against Tom Brady. We're going up against Gronkowski. You have the, to be the, prepared to be able to move. You know the football. what? <laughs> exactly. It, you know, no matter what, no matter how good your defense is, the Patriots will put up points on you. There is nobody in the league unless you put three guys on him that is going to cover Rob Gronkowski. I mean, he is absolutely uncoverable. Absolutely. He's got a big frame, a big body. Uh, I mean, even just the touchdown. you out, basically. I mean, I, I mean, even just the touchdown that he had, uh, basically, they they take it. You know, he he's lined up on the line, and then they motion him out as a wide receiver. They, uh, I mean, even if you put a cornerback on him, it's not going to happen. Yeah. It really isn't. Well, the cornerbacks, but, the average cornerback, is six feet tall. I mean, yeah. this guy's six, you know, whatever. Six it is. seven, yeah, six eight. He's a monster. So uh, the Patriots win this game, uh, forty to thirty-two. Moving on to uh, the Cowboys and Eagles. Uh, this was an ugly game all around. Um, the Eagles are just, I mean, their offense is absolutely horrendous. I've never seen a quarterback check it down, check the ball down so much in a Chip Kelly offense. I really have never seen anything like this. Sam Bradford looks like he is not comfortable in this offense. See, but you know what? This is what I've been saying all off season. When we when we've talked about um, you know, just the NFL and and the NFL coming uh, like the season starting and and everybody, you know, all over the Eagles. I I I've been I've always asked the question, what do you see? What do you see? I mean, I saw There's, a team that looked pretty complete. I mean, I looked at you know they had their linebacker. They had a great defense, a good front seven. Their secondary I mean, is not that bad at all. I mean, let's be Byron honest. Maxwell is an absolute waste of money. Uh, he's nothing without Richard Sherman, uh, and he's shown that. I mean, even the the play when Whedon came in, uh, they threw a, literally a five yard slant to Terrence Williams, and Byron Maxwell was nowhere in the vicinity of that, and totally just let him go. Uh, there's he's a lot a total, more. That, there's a lot more that comes into that, though. He's man. he's a total waste of money. Well, and Terrence Williams is a deep threat. I mean, you have to back up right away. Oh, man. absolutely. Obviously a short but route, you know what? Cut in. If if it was just one play, something similar against, happened to Darrell Revis even last night. Best if if it was football. just one play for Byron Maxwell, I'd say okay. But he got absolutely torched against the Atlanta Falcons the week before. Uh, so it, it's not just it's not just one play. 
Uh, Byron Maxwell is an absolute waste of money, and I'm going to say it for the rest of the season. Um, LaShawn McCoy being traded out of uh, Philly was the dumbest move that, that the Eagles could have done. Uh, he is the only running back that would be able to run behind this line. This line is not that good. And, you know, for DeMarco Murray, it's not going to happen. This system is not good for him. And I've been saying this. He's a downhill runner. He needs to be seven yards off the off the line of scrimmage, get a head start like every other running back out of the single back or eye formation. And, and you know, he's, he's a downhill runner. It, it, that's, that's exactly what he is. And you know what? Right now with him going – you know, left to right rather than, you know, forward, it, it's not it's not good for DeMarco Murray, and you see it now. 21 rushes, 11, 11 yards through the season. Well, we've he had 11 about, yards on his first uh, on his first rush with the Cowboys last year. So We've, we've talked about this with, the, with DeMarco Murray. We've talked about the difference between the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line and obviously the Cowboys offensive line. The Cowboys have the best offensive line in football. Murray wasn't going to be the same player in Philly. Uh, obviously, this is why he went down in fantasy football drafts. I mean, not to mention the uh, fumbling problem hasn't even occurred yet for him. So, and we all know that's going to come at some point. Philadelphia's in a lot of trouble. Sam Bradford's been playing awful. Uh, their running game, obviously, we've talked about this, you know, in, de- in, de- deal, in, whoa, in detail by now. <laughs> you know, they, they can't run the ball. Obviously, when you can't run the football and you become one-dimensional, you wind up getting the pass rush right away. It leads to a lot of checkdowns because you play – you're taking – your receivers don't have enough time to get the ball downfield. Yes. I mean, your quarterback doesn't have time to get the ball downfield, and your receivers don't have enough time to get downfield. So Cowboys, the Eagles are in trouble. Cowboys, on the other hand, uh, obviously losing Tony Romo hurts uh, for as long as he's going to be out. Definitely hurts. Uh, the defense looked very good. Sean Lee is back to his old self, uh, flying around the field. I can't wait for him to get next to uh, Rolando McClain and then have that pass rush now with uh, hopefully uh, Randy Gregory coming back the same – hopefully around the same week as, as Greg Hardy as well. Uh, I think that pass rush would be, would be solid. That linebacking crew is, is solid. Um, I think the defense can carry them uh, through these games. And, well, we and talked about it. I mean, your defense could only do so much. you got to be able oh, to pull down the field. I, I'm just – you know, like I said, uh, Tony Romo really hasn't been going deep or anything. So we're not expecting, uh, you know, Whedon to, to be a gunslinger. If he can just check it down, uh, hand the ball off, uh, you know, I, I feel like we would be right where we, you know, we were supposed to be. Um, well, not where, uh, where you were supposed to be. It was supposed to be first well, place yeah. in the NFC East. You know what? It's going to be challenging this time yeah, around. That's definitely. what it is, basically but what it means. We'll get more into uh, the injuries uh, in our Fantasy 14. But uh, for the, the scores for the rest of the, the week, you got uh, Panthers over the Texans 24-17. Uh, that was the most uh, grossest game of the week. <laughs> Steelers uh, over the 49ers 43-18. to Ben Roethlisberger had a day. Um, ben Rosberg is unbelievable at home. It's like this team is a completely different team when they're oh, on the road, though. You'll see. Philly, next time Pittsburgh hits the road, they're just going to be such a question mark. You're be like, is this the same team I just watched this week? Uh, the, they play the, the Rams next week. The big upset of the week, uh, Tampa Bay 26, uh, Saints 19. Uh, definitely knocked everybody out of their suicide pools. <laughs> no, there was a lot um, of games that knocked people out of their oh, suicide. Yeah. St. Louis um, losing a lot of teams. Minnesota beating the Lions 26-16. Uh, Cardinals absolutely destroying Chicago, what we basically basically said last week, uh, mm-hmm. 48-23. They look like the best um, team in football right now, the Cardinals. Yeah. Right. Like a full team. Yeah. Uh, Bengals 24, uh, Chargers 19. Titans uh, lost to the Browns in Manziel's first start, uh, 28-14. Uh, Rams lose to the Redskins, uh, definitely a head-scratcher for the Rams. Um, the Redskins 24-10. Uh, Jaguars, the other team that probably knocked everybody out of their elimination pools, um, 23-20 uh, over the Dolphins. Raiders, another team that probably knocked everybody else out of their, their elimination pool, uh, 37-33 over the Ravens. Baltimore's defense is a lot different without Suggs. Yeah, but, um, you know. No uh, pass rush at all. I mean, Derek Carr had all the time in the world that entire end of the game, he played, and he was unbelievable. I'm taking nothing away from Derek Carr. He was very, very good in that game. Yeah. But when you've got time to throw, man, anyone could be good. In and league. knuckleheaded flags. Yeah. Um, but uh, Fantasy 14 is coming up later. Next up, we have our picks and predictions. Lock, lock and upset of the week on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Tom and Jerry Sports Show featuring Kevin Donlin live every Tuesday on Zeno Radio and re-airs Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern on All Noise Radio and the Live 365 app. 
Follow us on Instagram at Tom and Jerry Sports Show and join the conversation on Twitter at TNJ Sports or visit our website at tnjsports.weebly.com or call in to 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. Follow the NFL this season on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Do you have sports opinions, or do you want to start your own sports debate? Then Overtime is right for you. Overtime is an app for sports lovers made by sports lovers. This is the best place to talk about sports. Overtime is available at the iTunes App Store. Be a part of something big and help us take the game to OT. Overtime, the game never ends. Money in the power. Yeah. Once you get a little, they just want to take you down, car. Huh? I got the money in the power. Yeah. Once you get a little, they just want to take you down, cuz. We've been going hard for too long. Can't get enough. The Tom and Jerry Sports Show picks and predictions for week three. We are back. Uh, you know, before we uh, start up, I want to let you know. Uh, remember to join the conversation on Twitter at TNJ Sports or at our website at tnjsports.weebly.com. And the Tom and Jerry Sports Show now has its very own app. If you have an Android phone, be sure to download that through the Google Play Store. You're speaking with Jerry and Kevin. We are taking calls 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. But like they said, man, the picks and predictions for this week. And, I mean, last week was – uh. Pretty eventful. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, we talked about a lot of uh, upsets and stuff, but going into this week, uh, you know, you know, we, you know, we'll start this right off. You know, we're gonna go with the Giants and Redskins, uh, the Thursday night football game on September 24th on the NFL Network, obviously, and uh, the Giants coming to this game 0 2 at home. It's a very important game for them. They cannot drop this one to the Washington Redskins, even though, in my opinion. And we've talked about this. I think the Washington Redskins look like the best team in this division, which was the last thing I you was know what? expecting. With with the Giants, uh, it's not just a like a must win just because they're zero and two. This is a must win because they lose this game, they're zero and two in the division. So it's not you know it's not just zero and three. You're going to be zero and three, but zero and two in the division, which makes it ten times worse. Um, so. You know, this is this is a, a big game for the Giants. Uh, Eli Manning's got to have a good game, uh, especially knowing that defense is really not going to be, uh, you know, too stout at least. Um, so, you know, I mean, my pick, I think I got to go with the Redskins because just the way that that they're playing and and just the way that the Giants have been, you know, hurt their. Uh, I'll go, I'll go against you on this one, to be honest. I think the Giants could find a way to win this game at home. I mean, just because of how important it is. But like you said, I mean, that that defense is going to have to switch things up. They're going to have to find ways to, uh, you know, they're going to have to find ways to win. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick call. Uh, what's going on? You're on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. How you doing? Am I on the air right now? Yeah, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, bud? What's going on, Donnie? What's Kevin up, bud? from from V Town. Hey, what's going on, big guy? Quick thing. Talk yep. about the Giants. I'm pretty optimistic that they will bounce back. History shows Coughlin doesn't start quick. Mm-hmm. And we should have won both those games. So. Absolutely. Plus Romo is out with the collarbone, so I'm not too worried. Pissed but not worried. And hold on. Oh, you got a question? All right, hold on. Okay. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, it's Phil from V S. Hey, quick what's going thing. on? Quick thing, a little, a little off, off subject. My bad. Before last night, my man Cespedes, he was in, he was in a rare one for twenty one slump. If this happens in October, you think the offense still goes? No. What do you mean? No, I, I, I don't. I think the the Mets offense is centered around Cespedes. I don't think that they do anything in in October if, you know, in playoff time if. Well, it, it's going to come down to whether or not the Patriots. I mean, whoa, the uh, the New York Mets are going to have to pitch very well in the playoffs, and I think they have the pitching to do so. I, I mean, I personally believe they need to bring those starters in in relief. Uh, that's how bad the relief pitching has been. But I mean, they have plenty of starters, plenty of arms right now. You're going to go with probably a three man rotation. Uh, obviously, we uh, 
you know, if you put these uh, arms into the bullpen alongside the starters, the Mets have a really good chance. But, uh, and listen, we really appreciate the call. Uh, we got to get back in. It's football time, baby. You know, the October will be here soon, though. And the New York Mets and Yankees getting prepared. Thanks for the call, hey, buddy. Hey, thanks a lot, man. No problem. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the Mets and Yanks, you know, yeah, well, it's going to be coming down soon. We'll be getting more into that yeah, as playoff time comes across. Obviously, not much Yankees, to talk about. Uh, but, by the way, Yankees are in a, a big series right now with the Blue Jays. So, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Absolutely. But uh, back to uh, the picks. For this week, uh, I'm I picked the uh, the Redskins. You picked the Giants. Yep. Uh, we got Cowboys and Falcons. Um, the Falcons have been playing really well. Uh, both teams are two and zero. Yeah. Uh, Falcons have been playing really well. Cowboys are uh, been playing. I, I mean, they've won two ugly games. So right there shows character for a team. Uh, you win ugly games. And you know what? That 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 shows a, a, a championship caliber team. Uh, right now, obviously losing Romo. If, if having Romo, um, you know, without Dez, I I, well, I wasn't really worried. Neither one of those names should be brought up right now because this is you know we're going into this game. They're going to not have either one of no, these I guys. Don't. You got Whedon coming in. You got Terrence Williams taking the uh, you know guys got to step up for the uh, Cowboys. They want any chance of this game. One thing I got they got going for them is this is a home game. Okay, you're behind your crowd. Atlanta's got a good front, but I think the Cowboys got a great offensive line. If they can lean on their running game, Brandon Whedon make the easy throws. This could be a lot closer than people think, but I'm going to go with the Falcons. Falcons look like they're very, very good right now, and they can really spread the ball. Uh, I'm going to go uh, Whedon takes it. Yeah, I understand. No, the Cowboys really have a design to go out there and win games still. I mean, I know the loss of Romo is going to hurt them, but, you know, obviously, like you said, you know, there hasn't really been any deep tries. I mean, the we thing, don't even know. Brandon Whedon could be a good deep threat. I you mean, know you what? Don't, he has a great arm. He does have a great arm. The thing that I'm worried about is the defense is probably going to play well. Um, but you got to hope they but, play well. They don't, that's well, why that, I'm taking but this, the Cowboys. I don't is, think they're going to play that the well. Thing. Too many the, injuries. The, big, the biggest part of this year and last year, the reason why the defense has played somewhat well is because they're not on the field as much. Yeah. The, the, the long sustaining the Cowboys, drives for the Cowboys. The Cowboys Absolutely. last year were, I think, number two. That's why it's going to be big for them to run the football well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, possession time was, I think, they were number two last year. And then this year they're definitely up there. I mean, they had an eleven minute drive in the in the first quarter of the the Giant game. Um, so a lot of people think this is going to be a game where they think the Falcons will win because of all the injuries. But this will be a lot closer than people expect. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know we're mixed up with this game. Uh, the Falcons. Uh, I'm going to go with the Falcons just basically off Cowboys. of you know they're more healthy right yeah. now. That's the only reason I'm going to go with. But the Cowboys do have coming you know playing at home going with them. It's going to be a close one, a very good one nonetheless. Uh, we're going to get into the Jets and Eagles. Uh, the Eagles are terrible, yeah, and I, I'm just going to tell you straight out, um, I, I don't like the, the Eagles, uh, so I'm <laughs> I'm going against the Eagles on this one, especially the way that they played the first two games. So I, I'm it, easy choice, Jets. Well, yeah, I'm going to go with the Jets. Well, not because of the way the Eagles' first two games went, but because of the way the Jets' first two games went. The Jets have looked like a very complete team right now. Uh, they look like they've, uh, you know, the offensive side of the ball struggles that they've had, honestly, for the past five, six years right yeah. now, easily. Uh Look for me behind him. I've talked about this. Ryan Fitzpatrick in that Chan Gailey offense. He's very comfortable in it. Guy's going for over 3,000 yards, but guys like Stevie Johnson is your number one. This guy's got Brandon Marshall at the helm. He's got Eric Decker on the other side, Chris Ivory, a bruiser, and even Bilal Powell looked really good last night. Jets really got me excited. I'm a Jet fan right now, and I'm very excited to be a Jet fan right now. They uh, they look like a complete team, and it uh, doesn't look like it's going to end this week. Um, Bills and Dolphins. Um, this is, this is going to be a good game because it's a division game. Um, the Dolphins are coming off of a uh, a bad loss. I'm going Bills, um, man. Miami Bills does not also look, came, coming off of Bills. Miami does not look like a good team. They don't. Right uh, you know what? They, they, you know, Miami. Jarvis Landry is not a number one in the NFL right now. No, okay? and is, we said that. We said that. He, he kind of uh, reminds us of, uh, you know, an Eric Decker. And you, you hear know, these reports about the Dominican Sioux. And oh, I, mean, I know. Even though they're denying it. I mean, any team would deny it, of course. Uh, but. Now, right now, Miami has its own troubles right now. Miami's got yeah. this home game. This is a very important game for them, division, at home. They need to win it. I just, I'm not going to pick them. I think the Bills have no, I think the Bills yeah, have I'm, a better defense. I think they'll be able to stop uh, Ryan Tannehill. I'm, I'm with you on that one. I mean, I'm I'll go be go honest, if the Washington Redskins can stop Ryan Tannehill, I don't see how the Buffalo Bills don't do it. All right, so we're going to go with quick picks here now. Uh, Indianapolis, Tennessee. Uh, I'm going to go with Indianapolis, bounce back. They can't start the season 0-3, division game. I don't care if it's on the road. Andrew Luck finds his ways and gets back into it. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Indianapolis as well. Tennessee is not that good. Mariota is not that good. Um, Oakland and Cleveland. 
Um, now we're hearing that uh, Manziel may not even play this game. Uh, okay, gonna... Manziel or whoever else it is, I'm going to go with the Raiders. I think the Raiders okay. looked really well. They looked very, very they confident towards the end of the game. game. Uh, that, um, that's a tough Baltimore team to play. I think they're. I think Baltimore is better than the Browns, even without Suggs. Uh, I think the Raiders take this game, uh, not in decisive fashion, but it'll be a good one, but I think the Raiders come up on top. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, with Oakland as well. Uh, Cincinnati, Baltimore. I'm going to go Cincinnati. They look like the best team in that division. They're going to run away with that division. I mean, aside from, you know, obviously Pittsburgh being really good, but I think, you know, I think Cincinnati will win both games against Pitt as well. Uh, I, Cincinnati looks like a really good team right now. Their offensive line is incredible. They're running the ball great. Uh, Baltimore's offense looks like a disaster. Uh, you know, they're lucky to score touchdowns. I can't believe they even put 30 points up against the Raiders. Uh, yeah, Cincinnati outright, even in Baltimore. Um, I'm going with Baltimore. Uh, I feel like that they're going to come off. Obviously, they're 0-2. I, I don't think they go 0-3. I think uh, they come out firing. Uh, I think Flacco will throw a couple of Flacco bombs. Um, I, I, I do think uh, Baltimore. Steve Smith needs to play that equivalent the same way if they have any chance. Uh, Jacksonville at New England. Oh, this is a no doubt. The Jacksonville Jaguars should crush the Patriots <laughs> on the road without a doubt. I mean, the way last week went, this is a no doubt. I mean, Jacksonville Jaguars to crush the New England Patriots without a doubt. This spread is probably 14 and should be 17. I mean, the Patriots look unbelievable right now, but their <laughs> defense is skeptical. And Blake Bortles is a very good yeah. quarterback. I'm going Dude, Jacksonville. I'm you're, taking them. Absolutely. You're going Jacksonville. Absolutely. I, uh, I mean, I think upset I, of the week. 70 points in this game? I mean, can can the Patriots put up that? Hey, you I mean, never know. You never know. Well, Jacksonville, uh, but, uh, Jacksonville stopped both teams they played so far this season. They haven't been great teams, but they've stopped them both to some degree. I mean, the Jaguars are uh, – You don't have to just, you know – Go against me if you you know you can you can pick the same team. Oh I mean, no, uh, definitely not the Jaguars. This is this is just an absurd absurd pick by you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely absurd. Well, I'm a believer in Blake Bortles. Yeah. He played very well. Got a lot of receiving options. I'm a believer in Tom Brady, and, and I don't with, think anybody's going to beat him. Allen Robinson, another 150 yards, oh. another two touchdowns. I like it. I'm going Jacksonville. All no right, uh, New Orleans and Carolina. New Orleans just looks. Horrendous. Well, you don't know. Gonna, you you know, don't know if Breeze is yeah, going to be I mean, in this if Breeze, game. If Breeze plays this game, I still think the Panthers. The Panthers have the best defense in that division. Yeah, they're at even, home. Even with Breeze, they're, they're just not looking good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Carolina. Yeah, they're at home. Too. I agree. Um, Tampa Bay, Houston. Do I have to watch this game? or? <laughs> Uh, Ryan Mallett looks terrible. Yeah, he does. But, I mean, Jameis Winston, he looked decent last game. I'm not going to lie. Mike Evans, but not an impact. Yeah, it's still surprising on Mike New Evans. Orleans. Yeah. So, you don't know. And I, think I want to see. I'm going to go Texans at home. I, I think I got to go Texans as well. Um, Buccaneers defense so, got sliced up by Mariota and yeah. nonetheless couldn't uh, Mariota was stopped with ease against the Cleveland Browns. So uh, San Diego, Minnesota. Uh, that's a tough one. I'm going to go Minnesota. They I, the see, that's, uh, that's who I was going to go with too. Uh, I think uh, Adrian Peterson has found his, his groove back, uh, especially after that, that last game. Uh, one of the best plays of the week was definitely uh, Bridgewater you know, on the verge of getting sacked and just tossing the ball to uh, Adrian Peterson. This will be a good one. I, I mean, mean, the Chargers are nobody can't really sleep on the Chargers right now. This is a tough game to have for a home game. I feel bad for Minnesota, obviously, seeing this matchup. This could go either way. I'm going to go with the Vikings because of the home game and because of Adrian Peterson. Yeah, I mean, nobody really saw it with that play. All they really saw was a 49 well, the yard. The Chargers haven't ran well at all, and Minnesota's defense has proven to stop everyone they've taken on, taken on so far. So Adrian Peterson no missed that. the block, obviously. That's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. Um, you know, before I was rudely interrupted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm going with Minnesota as well. Um, <laughs> Pittsburgh-St. Louis. This is this is going to be a good game, but, I, I, I mean, after what we just saw with St. Louis against uh, Washington uh, – I'm kind of a little worried with, with you know the way St. Louis is going to come into this game, especially the way that Pittsburgh's been playing the first two games. St. Louis, You're going St. Louis, absolutely. I'm going Antonio Brown and uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Steelers are a completely different team on the road. Ben Roethlisberger has always proven that over the years. It's not just one or two years. And this is going to be an absolute blowout, but I mean we got to bring it up anyway. Arizona, San Francisco. You think it's going to be a blowout? I think it's going to be a blowout. I think it'll be a close game. I think Arizona being at home, looking like the best team in football, you got to go with them. I, I think Arizona just looks absolutely amazing, really. Yep. Uh, Carson Palmer looks really good. Uh, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go Arizona. Um, this will be got my blowout of the week. Chicago, Seattle. 
Yeah, absolutely. Seattle, without a doubt, I think they crushed this game without a doubt. At home, the uh, yeah, defense comes back to form. Their first home game. Obviously, uh, Jay Cutler's not even going to be playing this week. Uh, this, Clawson, is definitely a, this is definitely a good game for Seattle to get off the 0-2 snide. Clawson got rejected like 14 times as soon as he walked into that <laughs> game. It was a disgrace. I think Seattle does a lot of the same. I think the Bears just don't have any shot in this game. Uh, Sunday night, Denver at Detroit. Okay, dome game, Peyton Manning. Okay, all right, next. Uh, <laughs> I think the Denver Broncos take this game. Their defense is clearly better than the Detroit Lions' defense. Detroit's offense looks like a question mark to begin with as well. Detroit looks like it's the usual Detroit Lions we've been used to my whole life, my whole childhood, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Minis- uh, and Monday, Monday night, night is uh, Green Bay at Kansas – oh, well, Kansas City at Green Bay. Tough game. I'm going to go Chiefs. Okay. I like the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are one of the best teams in football right now. I think they're a complete team. I think the Packers still have troubles on the defensive side. Uh, obviously, Aaron Rodgers Chiefs and company. Should, I mean, the Chiefs could have won that Denver game. They easily could have, uh, and I think the same kind of formula goes for the Green Bay Packers, even on the road. This is one of one of the few teams that can beat the Packers on the road, and I think the Chiefs are one of them. Yeah. So uh, that was our picks, but first we'll do the Tom and Jerry Sports Show presents the Lock of the Week. Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Uh, and then we got – It's time for Jerry and Kevin's Upset of the Week. Upset of the Week. I am going to go with uh, the pick that probably uh, surprised everybody. I'm going Baltimore. Yeah, I'm going to go Jacksonville. I, I, you could still say with the surprising, but I really like the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think the Patriots' offense, defense is very questionable. I think the Jaguars definitely have a better defense. And then I think Blake Bortles is a very good quarterback. I think he's definitely learning. He's learned enough. Uh, that might be a little biased being a Jet fan with the New England Patriots, but I think the Patriots uh, shocked the world and lose this game at home. Yeah. Um, I, Jacksonville played a great game against Miami. I don't think people realize that. Yeah, they, they were able to stop did. Tannehill on a lot of big drives, important drives. I know Tom Brady and Ryan Tannehill are different players, of course. But uh, it is time. For overtime, overtime on the Tom and Jerry Sports, Sports Show. Show, it's time. It's time. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, am I spending well, that right now? Or? <laughs> <laughs> a little technical difficulties, but uh, uh, we're going to go with our uh, overtime debate of the week. Uh, if you have overtime, uh, definitely uh, check this out. But uh, first, uh, go download it if you didn't uh, in the iTunes App Store. Overtime debate of the week. We're going to go with... What is the best division in football? In football, the best division. Uh, I mean, I'm going AFC East, man. I think they have the best teams I, in that division. I, I think really you got to go with the AFC East right now. I mean, um, you agree? I I am agreeing because uh, it could be the NFC uh, West. I still, even with Seattle, uh, you know, I, don't I mean, know. you got Arizona, the best team in football right now. Seahawks. I know they dropped the stunner to the Washington Redskins, but I think they go back to their winning ways. There, there is a lot, a lot to debate about this, but I mean, I, I think with, um, you know, the Jets. Cause I, I, I don't think anybody was really expecting the Jets to play this well. Um, you know, I was, I was maybe expecting a, um, maybe an eight and eight season from the Jets. Uh, they're surprising me. So, I mean, with the Bills, the way they play in the first game, obviously they, they in week two, they went up against the Patriots. So, I you know, I really can't. Um, but, I mean, you got three teams that are, are, are good teams in, in the NFL, in the top ten at least. Um, and uh, the Dolphins are just bad. But three out of four teams, I mean. And people thought the Dolphins had a chance at this division, too. I yeah. mean, this, this NFL season has been really confusing right off the bat. I mean, and, uh, it'll probably continue. Each yeah. week will make me more puzzled. <laughs> we got everything you need to know when it comes to fantasy with Fantasy 14 up next. Do you have sports opinions or do you want to start your own sports debate? Then Overtime is right for you. Overtime is an app for sports lovers made by sports lovers. This is the best place to talk about sports. Overtime is available at the iTunes App Store. Be a part of something big and help us take the game to OT. Overtime, the game never ends. Overtime. 
Follow the NFL this season on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Tom and Jerry Sports Show featuring Kevin Donlan live every Tuesday on Zeno Radio and re-airs Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern on All Noise Radio and the Live 365 app. Follow us on Instagram at Tom and Jerry Sports Show and join the conversation on Twitter at TNJ Sports or visit our website at tnjsports.weebly.com or call in to 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. I will fight till I take my last breath. I got the heart of a warrior, the heart of a warrior. The Tom and Jerry Sports Show Fantasy 14. And we are back. And before we get into our fantasy talk, we're going to take a phone call. How you doing? You're on the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Hello? Hello. How's it going? I'm good. How, how are you? Not Is bad. Um, <laughs> so how important do you think it's for the Mets to have a better record than the Dodgers to get home field? It definitely is an important factor. The Mets definitely want to have uh, home field. Right? I'm sorry, what? I just got a pretty good home record, no? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, being at home is always going to be the more important thing come playoff time, especially in the uh, five-game division series, you know, right off the bat. But, you know, for the Mets, uh, they really – home or road, I think this team's pitching is going to be very effective nonetheless. I think it yeah, actually it, be more of an advantage for to get uh, – If the pitching is there – it really doesn't matter where you're playing. Yeah, I think for the New York Mets right now, winning, you know, getting home field is always nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, Especially that, for the fans, exactly. absolutely. That, but that's going to be perfect for. I think for them, this team but... to be successful, I think you know, honestly, these pitchers have never shown. I mean, the only thing I would say, Syndergaard has been uh, a completely different pitcher when it comes well, yeah. to, uh, uh, you know, Syndergaard's been a completely different pitcher from home and road. But that's probably the one thing the Mets got going for him. But you know, obviously Matt Harvey and all them, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna be effective no matter where they are right now. Matt's the same way. Right, and uh, what do you think about the Giants Thursday night? I think they're going to lose. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I'm going to take the Giants myself. He's going with Washington. Uh, obviously, I think the Giants, you know, that's going to be a Washington, close game. Washington should be Miami too, no? I'm sorry? What was the score in the Washington-Miami game? Miami only won by seven, no? The Mi- yeah. Miami did. Miami, Miami Washington? Lost. Yeah, Miami. Washington beat Miami. Did they? Washington beat Miami. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Miami, uh, <laughs> Miami's horrible, man. Uh, they they played terrible through the first two games. Washington's been, uh, no, Washington's I, no, been playing well. No, Washington, uh, Washington beat Miami <laughs> in week one. Did they play in week one? Who they? Oh yeah, yeah. Washington. We, no, Washington oh, lost yeah, by Washington, three. Yeah, yeah, no, he's right. Washington lost to Miami yeah. by three. They uh, confused. Yeah, me. they should have won that game. Then yeah, they should have won that game. Is right. Yeah, Washington yeah. obviously has played like the best team in this division, without a doubt, so far early on. Um, obviously Miami dropping one to Jacksonville, so you know to lose a game. Uh, obviously, you know this league is this league has been really tricky. And honestly, when it comes to the Giants, they've been awful. Okay, they've they've found ways to take you know, you know when you're up by ten and losing those games like that you twice. Know, yeah, you, I mean you, you better keep doing it, and you better find a way to get out of that slump. So the Giants find themselves in a lot of trouble right now. Their defense can't stop anybody. I don't see that changing, to be honest. So, uh, you know, well, listen, we appreciate the call. we got to get into our Fantasy 14, man. That's what the fans want, right. baby. Have a good one. Uh, let's go Mets. Let's go Jets, freak. Let's go, baby. Did you just call me a freak? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, we're going to go in a little bit into the injuries. Uh, Romo's down. Uh, it's definitely, definitely going to be a hard thing for uh, those of you that have Romo on your team, especially, I mean, if you have Cutler, uh, if you have – you know, Breeze, Romo, um, Stafford. Yeah. I mean, uh, going out there, I mean, looking at quarterbacks that are out there, uh, I know in my league, there's, uh, Tyrod Taylor's out there. Um, I think Blake Bortles could be a really good play too. Joe Flacco's still out there for one of, uh, one of my leagues. I'll be honest. Um, Blake Bortles is a great play against the New England Patriots. Even if they do lose that game, this is going to be a throw heavy kind of game. Oh yeah. Uh, They're going to have no choice but to throw a ball a lot in that game. Blake Bortles is a very pickup. He's probably one of the best pickups of the week this week on your fantasy Um, wire. You know what? You know who I think is a good pickup? Uh, Devontae Freeman. 
Oh, yeah. Well, I think, you know what it is? A lot of people actually have him already. Yeah. This guy was going I mean, into the season as yeah. a starter, and then all of a sudden Tevin Coleman started coming in and taking all the carries. But now with, uh, obviously, the recent injury to him, uh, Devontae Freeman takes the full load. Uh, if you've got Devontae Freeman on your fantasy team and you're struggling with running back, slide him right in there. He's start definitely him. a good pick this week. Start him. Uh, but uh, start him, sit him for quarterback. Obviously, this week, I, honestly, my sleeper, or I guess the stardom, will be Blake Bortles. I mean, this is a guy you'll be able to get on your waiver wire right now. If you have him on your bench, as opposed to other big-name quarterbacks, I say you make the switch now. Blake Bortles should, is in for a good game. I mean, yeah. Obviously, you're in New England, and barring any kind of rain or terrible weather going in there, but obviously, we're still in September, so uh, you're not going to get it to be too start, cold. I, for me, uh, stardom, uh, Carson Palmer. Oh, yeah, of course. Palmer at home, very good team against... Uh, the Bears, right? Uh, no, they're playing no. the 49ers. 49ers, yeah. Um, Running back. Who would you sit him for a quarterback? Uh, quarterback, if you're going to bench someone this week, uh, I honestly have to say, I mean, you're going to have to – probably Stafford. I mean, you have no choice. Yeah. you got to find a different option right now. And that's what I'm saying with Blake Borles. If you're a Stafford owner right now, this guy's playing on Sunday night. You don't know if he's going to play. You don't want to find out at 4 o'clock in the afternoon that he isn't playing. Uh, and even if he does play, I don't expect him to be too effective, even though that should be a blown-out game. I think Denver will be able to score a lot of points against that defense, and he might not have a choice but to throw it a lot. But nonetheless, uh, you don't know about the injury. I'd say go out there, get Blake Bortles, and uh, go from there. Who's your side? Uh, I don't really even know. Um, uh, but we'll go into running back. Um, start him. Running back start him. Uh, Marshawn Lynch. I mean, at home against the uh, Chicago Bears. The Bears are one of the worst defenses in football right now. This is a guy that's a guarantee to go out there and get you some work for someone that's obviously been a uh, <laughs> that's obviously you know been a uh, little bit of a bust, but uh, so far in the season. But I think he's uh, poised to have a good week this week. Yeah. Um, Who's your start? Start him, James Starks. You don't know if Lacey's going to play Monday night. It's a little bit of a risk, don't you think? I would go with it. I don't blame you. And obviously, if Eddie Lacey plays this week, it'll probably be a 50-50 splits for James Stark. So, obviously, with DraftKings and FanDuel, go out there and get this man for dirt cheap. He might be a good play this week, even if he splits time. Sit him. Sit him. Uh, running back. When it comes to sit him, I would have to say DeMarco Murray, man. Absolutely, so, DeMarco Murray. <laughs> yeah, DeMarco Murray is probably a sit. I think all three of the running backs for the Eagles are all sit Maybe even – I think Dennis Rolls might have the best matchup in this league because obviously he's very difficult to guard. The Jets do not have the best uh, coverage linebackers in the league. Um, so they could be uh, in for a good day for Darren Sproles, maybe even add a touchdown into it. DeMarco Murray, hands down, do not start this man. If he can't run the ball first two weeks of the season, the Jets, nobody's given up uh, rushing uh, – Jets haven't given up really rushing yards to anybody all yeah. year so far, so – uh, Gore had a couple of good runs, but they both yeah. got called back. Wide receiver. Why? Well, what about uh, what about yes, Settle running back? Uh, Demarco Murray. I'm going with. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah. It's unanimous. Yeah. Demarco Murray, you're yeah. probably the biggest bust in football right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, wide receiver. Stardom. Uh, I'd have to go Brandon Marshall. Guy yeah. obviously has just been very, very good for the New York Jets. I think without the, them having a significant tight end, he is the main goal line threat. And uh, red zone threat for the New York Jets. I, I think this guy is obviously going up on all draft boards right now. He could make him way, he'd make his argument to be a top ten receiver this year in fantasy. Uh, I'm going to go with Terrence Williams. I understand. Yeah, no, definitely a decent matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. Terrible secondary. I like it. Yeah. So uh, sit him. Uh, sit him this week. Uh, obviously, when it comes, I mean, I'm not a big fan of anybody taking on uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals have obviously stopped a lot of big time receivers early on, and this week, I th- who are they playing this week? Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati's playing. I, f- I forget who I forget who picked. Um, but uh, you know, it really doesn't matter. To be uh, honest. Yeah, whoever <laughs> Cincinnati's playing, I would say bench them because yeah. obviously, right now, Cincinnati against the wide receiver has been unbelievable. They've really been absolutely unbelievable against the pass on against all teams right now. Oh, Baltimore. I'm sorry. Steve Smith. There you go. Uh, sit him. I know he had a great week last week, but definitely sit him this week, even at home. Yeah, so, I mean, sit him uh, for wide receiver. I, I would, I mean, if you're going, you know, with uh, Cincinnati, uh, I'd go with A.J. Green. Sit him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Baltimore has a very good secondary. They're on the road. Uh, that doesn't look like it's going to be a very high-scoring game. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely uh, I agree with you 100%, A.J. Green. Tight end. Tight end. Start him this week. Uh, obviously, you, you know, know, whoever's playing the Oakland Raiders, I mean, the Oakland Raiders have been awful. 
awful yeah. against the tight end. God awful. They actually they're officially the worst team against the tight end this season. Uh and Oakland's obviously taking on uh who is it uh I'm drawing a lot of blanks. Can we just go to these? <laughs> yeah. Stop bringing it up. Well it's true though. <laughs> you gotta uh, go off matchups, man. Tight end, um Cleveland's tight end. Oh. I would oh, yeah. I would go with um I I'm gonna go with Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed. Start him? Yeah. It's the Giants. Because yeah. the Giants are, are just not, not good at covering the tight end. Um but uh sit him for for uh tight end. Uh I think Jimmy Graham. This guy it sounds crazy. Really? But... I I mean I, I'm gonna go with the same one. I mean even against Chicago Bears, yeah, they, they just, just look not, like they're not getting him the ball. Yeah, uh, defense. Uh, defense start him this week. Uh, you got to go with the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah, I, I think I, I go with the same one. Uh, sit them. I sit them. Uh, I mean, I'm never a fan of taking any defense on the road. That's how I've always been with defenses. But actually, my sit them this week will be a home team. The Detroit Lions do not start this team. Okay. They're going to get roughed up. They can't yeah. stop anybody right now. If you can't stop Teddy Bridgewater, you are not stopping even a struggling pain man. Yeah, I'm going to go with the same one. Uh, but that will do it for Fantasy 14. That will also do it for the Tom and Jerry Sports Show. Uh, I am Jerry. I'm Kevin. Be brief. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Tom and Jerry Show. Breezy.